Muay Mubarak is having the presence of the Prophet. One must have perfect manners. If one has manners, it shows your Islam. It shows your Iman. It shows your Ihsan. It shows your ill. People have so much ill, but they have no manners. Welcome to Naqshubadi Tariqa. We are here to learn about our ego and how the ego is tricking us. Now this whole area, <coughs> be careful, because it is surrounded by angels. It's surrounded by other creatures that they are looking at you. As much manners that you have in the presence of the Prophet, that much blessings will reach to you. If you don't, then that's the time. They may give you one smack. You can go to any saint and any scholar to ask to pray for you. They don't like it. We know how to conduct ourselves in front of the mayor. If you are invited to the mayor, man and woman, you know how to conduct yourself, yes? You know how to dress yourself. You know when to speak, when not to speak. If you're in the presence of the king, you take care. You cannot even look any way that you want to. Our holy prophet والسلام, is the king of kings. So, what is that that is there? Just one piece of beard? If you treat it like a one piece of beard, that much you're going to get. You treat it like Prophet is here, which he is, <coughs> you're going to get blessings that no ilm, no ibadat that you do by yourself is going to give it to you. Because one prayer from the Prophet is enough. If you think, your amal and your ibadat is better than the prayer of the Prophet. Think again. Your faith now is in question. So, welcome to you. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to these little kids that they know. You see? She comes and she sits. She listens to me. I met her yesterday. Literally. But the kids, they are connected to that alam and they know when to move. Adults are a bit lost. This is how it is with our great-grandfathers. This is how it is with our ancestors. Every single one of you, you didn't come from emptiness. They know when the Mui Mubarak is there. They behave themselves. We come from the children of the Ottomans. We come from the children of the Mughal Sultans. It is time that the Ummat gets back some of the sharaf that has been lost and learn how to carry that. Inshallah Rahman, if we do that, you win for yourself. You're not doing me a favor or anyone. You win for yourself. If not, everyone is free. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to the Prophet. May our prayer be accepted, inshaAllah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You should sit a little bit, inshaAllah. Anything anyone wants to say from the men? If you think this is harsh, wait till you come to our Darga. You see how the shaykhs they train it. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's do it. Let's see.
Hazreti Mevlana Cunumi, Karasallah Sir is saying, be as you are or appear as you are being. So, here we are. It was Billah in the Shaitan Rajin. Please sit. Be comfortable. Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Bistur, Madad, Esfadi, So Prophet ﷺ is here and the man who leaves without kissing and paying respects to him is showing something. We're here to learn. We're not here to put someone up or to put someone low. We're here to learn from each other. Isn't that what illness to learn? What is showing now? If the Prophet is here, whatever happens, a man or a woman or anyone, they get upset and they leave. The Prophet is here. Who are you coming for? Me? You're coming from Allah. You're coming for Him. Awliya Allah, they're testing. Prophet is testing. Whatever that is in your heart will show. It has to be. If you're making the zikr of Allah in your heart, but your actions is not pleasing to Allah. Can a man still say, what is in here is that, that counts? The actions don't count. The pillars of Islam is not just a belief of the Aman to be love. Aman to be lahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa miakhir. Believing in Allah, believing in the angels, believing in the books, the prophets, believing in faith. But more than the belief now, if a man is not saying shahadat, his faith is not complete. And if the man is not praying, he is not fulfilling an obligation. Five prayers, isn't it? Fasting, it is an obligation. Zakat, it is an obligation. The Hajj, it is an obligation. All these are actions. What is in your heart in Islam is showing. What is in your heart has to reflect on your face, number one. That's why the are Allah, they say when we look at their faces, we know not only their past but also their future. This is not hidden knowledge to them. For them it is open knowledge. Allah is open it to them. To us it may be hidden. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, he is the Shah, the king of Ibn al-Din, of the hidden knowledge. If we think knowledge is all that we get from Google or Yahoo, then we are severely mistaken. <coughs> because Holy Prophet ﷺ, when the ayat came to him, 
Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hz. Cibrail aleyhisselam came and said, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Kaf. The Prophet says, I know. He says, Ha. He says, I know. Ya, I know. Ayn, I know. Sar, I know. Prophet is saying, This is Wahi that is coming. That is the opening of what? Suratul Maryam. But Prophet already knew. Jibreel a.s. asked him, Ya Rasulullah, how would you know? How do you know? And Prophet a.s. says, Where do you take the revelation from, Ya Jibreel? Jibreel a.s. says, Ya Rasulullah, I take it from a certain station, from behind a curtain, a parda. It is handed to me. <coughs> and Prophet said, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Jibreel, next time you go there, I give you permission. See who is behind the parda. If we say this to Wahhabis, they say, oh, it's coming from Allah. Of course, everything is coming from Allah. But now, there is a knower above every knower. And there is knowledge above every knowledge. Because the knower knows knowledge. And there is a knowledge above every knowledge. And the one who possesses all the knowledges is who? Holy Prophet ﷺ. He is the king, the sultan Tan of all knowledges. This is the Akira of the Ahli Sunnat and of the Ahli Tariqat for 1400 years. So Jibreel a.s. went. And the next time Wahi was about to be given, to be handed to the Prophet He looked. And he saw who was behind the curtain. <coughs> then he came down. And he said salam to the Prophet. Prophet Salaam looked at him and said, Ya Jibrail, did you see who the Quran is from? He says, Ya, ya Rasulullah. I did. Who is it from? Ya Jibreel. He said, It is from Muhammad to Muhammad. Ali Salatu Wasalam. Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam wasn't a man like us, meat and bones, like the encyclopedias that our friends in the West, they write, in 622 AD, brought by a camel herder, orphan, who heard voices when he was in meditation and meditation, and he came down and decided to change his society, waged war with his family and neighbors, went to a city, took over that city, started raiding and pillaging, took over Mecca and with his sword conquered the world. Isn't that the history that they're teaching us? That Islam is? Is that knowledge? That is false knowledge. That is not our history. That is not our story. Holy Prophet <coughs> He is Sayyidul Awalil Wal Ahirin. He is master of the first and the last. He is a creature, of course. Don't get mistaken. Some people may think that we are saying that he is higher than that. No, he is not. Allah is Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Jalla Jalalahu, La Sharika But his Habib is one. 
and as the Holy Prophet that he has created everything for his sake. What does that mean? He has created the paradises and the hells for his sake. He has created man and jinns and the malakut for his sake. He has created the arsh for his sake. This is knowledge. What is knowledge? But to remember the Prophet and to thank Allah and trying to remember and trying to understand the high station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him. He is the title Qawba Kawsayn. <coughs> that he approached his Lord within two both lengths and even nearer. He is not man like us. Sure, he was sent to this world as a man. But just as the marble is different from the diamond, he is different from us. And as much as you understand this, that much you are going to give respect and value to this. That much you are going to say, Ya Rasulullah I'm here begging at your door. Begging at your door and I'm asking you to grant me shafa. Because you who are nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you think Holy Prophet is like us. Little bit get upset on a holy night like this. Man gets upset and turns his back on the Prophet. Hmm. He is the master and the owner of generosity. And he will not turn away. Yes, so now, why are we here? Are we here as a routine? Are we here as a ritual, a custom that we have inherited from our parents that we are doing? Something that is a ritual means that is devoid of so much meaning, but you cannot let it go and you just repeat it. You are not finding the value because something that is real every single day it comes with its own secrets. It comes with its own freshness. It comes with its own knowledge. And every moment it is different. Every day it is different. The Ottoman Turks, they say, treat every night like it is Laylatul Qadir. And treat everyone you meet as if he's Hizr alayhi salam. That's the time. That is ma'rifat. That is knowledge. Because every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the first paradises. And looking. Every night it is special. But man who is blind, who closes his eyes, even if the sun is shining on his face full blast, until he opens his eyes, he's just going to see darkness. May Allah remove darkness from our hearts. Amen. And to understand what is right and what is wrong, and for us to step on our ego. Because the bottom line is that, it is the ego. The bottom line it is the ego. That is blocking us from being a servant to our Lord. You see, so many people, they pray so much, they fast, they do so many things, but they have such uncontrollable anger in their hearts that if power is given to their hands, they can destroy the whole world. What do you think this Amal and Salada is going to do to you? I met someone recently, we were speaking about some matters, you know, we are not Shubhadis. We are real. Sometimes you have to, when you engage with people, you know your friends who are real, you dispense with protocol and ceremony sometimes, no? You talk friend to friend, man to man. That's the time you become sincere, you become honest. We were speaking. He got a little bit upset. Then he said, oh, 
I have been in Tarikat before you were born. In Tarikat terms, it's very horrific to hear someone speaking like that. If you understand a little bit of the adab of Tarikat. Because what does that show? That shows arrogance. Even if it were true, let me tell you a story. And these are not stories. These are events that happen to teach us. One man, he has been fasting for over 70 years in his life. Every single day he fasted. Of course, if you're trying to be scholastic with me and nitpick, I say, of course, yeah, except for Eid and certain prayers for his haram. But I think you all are intelligent. I don't have to micromanage your thoughts. <clears throat> he fasted every single day. He kept it to himself. Nobody knew. Because Holy Prophet Satan says, when you're doing good things, what the right hand gives, the left hand must not know. Blessings come that way. So, he's over 70 years old, and every year Shaitan is trying to grab him, to trick him, to take away all his sawab, to take away all his blessings that he has done. Shaitan is the master of the ego. He tricks you. The struggle against your nafs, it is the greatest struggle. What is it called? Jihad al-Akbar, the greatest struggle against your nafs. So this man, he was standing in line one day. Margaret time is entering. It was Ramazan time. And people, they were in line to get bread. In those days, as it is in certain parts of the world now, also Ramazan time comes, they give bread for free. They're making it and giving it. He was standing there, and Shaitan disguised himself. Now, standing there next to him, Shaitan is Shaitan, you see? We are mentioning certain things have to happen. The eyes are open. It was Billahi and Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Where the turbar of Rasul. So Shaitan is thinking for over 70 years how to destroy this man and take away all his soul. And on that day, when everyone was standing and Margaret time was coming and everyone was waiting for the bread to come. And, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right. So Shaitan was behind this old man. Time was entering. Now Shaitan behind the old man. Say, Quickly, hurry up, give me the bread. I have been fasting whole day. I need to break my fast to go home. What's the matter with you? He started talking a lot, cursing. Everyone else was quiet. Certain times, certain unusual things happen. And when in the presence of Eliya Allah, it's best to pull back and to observe what is happening. This is when real intelligence that will make you knowledgeable, make you to become more precise and to understand what is happening, it comes to you. This is not from reading books. Started heckling, saying, Give me the bread. This old man couldn't control himself anymore. So he turned around and says, Why don't you be quiet? We're all waiting here. I have been fasting for 70 years. 
and I'm being patient. You, you just fasted today and you complain? As soon as he said that, he realized he did something big wrong. <coughs> and that man looked at him and smiled, and he knew it was Shaitan. Man was laughing. Shaitan was laughing. <laughs> I got you this time, he said. All this while, I was trying to see how I can take away all this so I got you. Because just with that, you have bragged, you have boasted, you have told this whole world, you did not do it now for the sake of Allah. Because now we have told the whole world. Hey Allah, he took it. Now we come into the uh, delicacy of Adab. And Adab is a soul of tariqah. Now we come to the delicacy of how to have manners. And we are all here to learn. I'm here to learn. These words, first they are for me. I'm not excluding myself. Then for those who want to listen. If you don't want to listen, it's up to you. But right now, as I said, this is the Durbar of the Prophet ﷺ. And Alhamdulillah, it is officiated by our Sahib Usaid, Shalom Kudisi Rabbani. And he has put us here. There are certain responsibilities that we have to carry. And anyone who comes with good intentions, mashallah to you. Anyone who comes with more respect to show the celebration of the Mervut Mubarak, all blessings to you. For those who intend but they couldn't do it, we still pray for them. But those who are arrogant and stubborn and they're envious and they're angry, that time, until they remove that veil from their heart, not even the prophets, they can come to help them. Because the Mujahid is not because they didn't have knowledge. And we will help. And all those ones who are opposed to the Prophet, they said to us, but they have the biggest egos. Their head, they say, we refuse to put our head down, to bend our head down to that one, whom we know, He's a camel herder, they say. He didn't have anything. He heard voices in a cave. But we are dust under the feet of a holy prophet. And we are happy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being born from within his nation. And we're asking Allah to forgive everyone who has who is here and who is not here, who has good intentions. And those who don't, for Allah to turn their hearts, inshallah, to the right way. Because, like they say, in the presence of uh, Eshkia, Eshkia? Eshkia. You know Eshkia? Eshkia means like, um, it's a highway man, but that's a very archaic term. It's like a bug. Okay? I think everyone knows a bug, right? Killer, a murderer, a robber. He does all wrong things. The only Allah is saying, in the presence of such a man, watch what you say. Of course, he may kill you if you say something wrong. But in the presence of the earlier, watch what goes on in your heart. What about the presence of the Sayyids of the Anbiya? May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. Amen. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you. Like I said, we are not here to praise each other. We are not here to put each other down. We are here to learn. And if there's something that is there for you to teach me, say. But unfortunately, unfortunately, this microphone is given to my hand. So I'm saying right now, later you may say.
to have a Brazilian. Right now, uh, we'll be, before that, we're going to do the Ottoman tradition of the Nebu that we are going to recite. This is a very famous long epic poem that is written by Suleiman Chalabi, Hasretari. He was an Ottoman scholar and he was a saint. And he wrote in very beautiful Ottoman language, mixing Turkish, Persian, and Arabic, um, and other strong languages, describing <coughs> the birth and the life of the Holy Prophet. And this has been sung for over 500 years or more. Suleiman Shalabi Hasrati. And this is still a tradition that is very strong in the Ottoman lands from the Balkans to Western China. They call it the Lut. And they will sing it for very holy nights and holy days and special occasions. So, inshallah, Rahman, we get a taste of that. <laughs> 